What is going on everybody? Hope you're having a great day, week, month, year, wherever you are, whenever you are. So today what we're going to be talking about is the get unsuspended service that a lot of Amazon sellers do use, but it isn't really talked about often enough, I find. And I've definitely never myself done a video directly on the actual get unsuspended website, what it is, why it's helpful, why we want to sort of protect ourselves in terms of being able to go to a service in the event that something happens to your Amazon account, right? And obviously, as you can see here, it says, have, um, has your Amazon account been suspended? But it's not just for when you get suspended. So like in the eventuality that you get suspended, right? It's also about uh, protection in advance in the event that that happens. Also in terms of policy warnings and issues like that. So I just kind of skim through this website. I'm not gonna go through it all. Lots of uh, kind of you know videos and, and you know people that have sort of posted uh, results, but ultimately what it is is a either fixed fee, as you can see down here, or a monthly fee. Now I'll show you the monthly fee in a minute. You can see here, 24 hours including weekends, done with you, done for you, right? Suspension. Basically, this is going to be they are going to create a plan of action to basically get your account back if it is deactivated or suspended or whatever it you know, happens to be at risk, something like that. Obviously, you can have suspension assist where they guide you through the steps to do a um, case or do a suspension letter, whatever it's called, plan of action. There we go. Do a plan of action so that you obviously write it with their guidance or you can get them to do it directly. Obviously, the price is clearly different in terms of if you want to have assistance, it's like 300 quid. Or you want obviously a one-time payment of 700 if you actually get it done for you. Now, you know what would I recommend? It depends on how much time, effort you're willing to put into it. I feel like you know you can see here high success rate, 95% of the following instructions correctly. If you're able to spend the time to actually dissect what you need to do, because it's not as easy as just sending a reply saying, "I have no idea why I've been suspended. Uh, this is not the case." Blah blah blah. You know. Like, sort of generic stuff it needs to be almost it needs to be i'm so sorry that this eventuality has happened basically almost admitting guilt even if it's not your fault and so it's about understanding how to actually do the process and the appeal and plan of action more than trying to defend your innocence it seems that's kind of been the case with amazon for a long time it's been that even though you might not actually be in the wrong for whatever reason it, they don't really care um, and they actually want you to put a plan of action in place to basically show how you will not do that again, even if it's not your fault. So uh, it, it, it takes a little bit of time to get your head around, if you know what I mean, because you want to be defensive and back up the reasons why you believe it's false or wrong, but ultimately it doesn't really get you anywhere. And the goal is to get your account back, right? So uh, yes, of course you can do the assist, but there's also the... Um, one where it's done for you, which obviously probably has a slightly higher rate of success. Yeah, you can see it's not massive, but obviously when it comes to your account, do you want to just pay extra and go for the, you know, the higher percentage? Most probably it depends on the level of seller that you are. It depends on the reason as well, potentially. But obviously you have two options there. If you scroll up to the top, there's also, if you click this, suspension protection. This is what I have. I've been basically subscribe to the UK uh, suspension protect for many years now to be honest and the main times that I've had to use it is when I've got a policy warning for something that is a little unusual meaning if I if it's like a suspected or it's a food product uh, violation usually you can get them removed by just following the steps it's when it comes to stuff like intellectual property violations or authenticity various things that are a little bit more serious on the account where you probably need to have a you know to have some sort of protection because it's not as straightforward to reply to them like i've just explained um they like even if it's not your fault for example or whatever they or it's not you know it's not counterfeit it's not all um it's authentic for example or whatever it is then really you want to you know have some sort of protection like insurance you know my, mini insurance really uh because i've had to use this reach out to them a handful of times over five years or four years however long i've been subscribed to them um and it's usually about how to go about trying to um raise a plan of action for i can't remember what it's been now but in the past there's been the odd thing that i've thought you know what if i can try to get a removal then great 
on and obviously after 180 days they are they drop off your account but with the new account health rating the actual sort of score you'll be able to visually see how much certain policies are uh, warnings are affecting that score so you'll be able to see it directly in real time almost real time maybe after about a couple of days so you'll be able to gauge the importance of what's the most important one to be aware of and so on and so forth and if you start to get multiple um, policy warnings in the same category you can actually get your account suspended so depending on the severity of the policy warning you either have five or two i believe so the, the more serious ones if you have more than two within the same category you can get an at risk and if you have more than five of the more general uh, policy warnings within 180 days but this is 180 days for all of us then again your account potentially could be at risk so it could be that you have 600 health but actually it goes down to at risk because you've had repeat violations in the same category within 180 days now of course if you start if you have the odd one here or there it's not the end of the world but if it starts to build up a little bit over six months then it's probably worth trying to action and rectify them because historically for me uh, over the years, I've, if I've got the odd policy warning, I've not really bothered to appeal it because it's just the odd one. But now that I've sort of understand everything I've just told you, it's important to, if you start to see that, you know, within six months, you might actually get to the point where you've got two very serious being like intellectual property violations or, uh, or inauthentic. Two doesn't take a lot, right? If you've got one, that's putting you at risk because, you know, any day you could potentially get another one, right? Um, but obviously, if you've got the lesser of the policy warning issues, then you've got five. So maybe if you've got the odd one, you're not so worried. Uh, but it also is related to, you know, your, the size of your account. The more products you sell, the bigger that your account is in terms of the sales that you do per month, per year or whatever. You have a little bit more leniency, I, I believe, within reason, um, because you're selling more products. So there's a higher chance that you're going to get a potential policy warning you know if you're doing a billion pounds on amazon a year as I make this example up then of course you're probably going to get violations because you're selling so much that it's just probabilities if you're a smaller seller that's when it's probably actually more important to protect your account because less needs to happen for you to have serious consequences occur on your account because the percentage against how many you're selling the percentage in terms of one item's got policy warning or whatever it is or you know, you've got intellectual property violation it's on a lot less say inventory for the intellectual property violation so you, the, the selection of products you sell is only 30 so you've got one in 30 it's actually got a problem if you're selling 10,000 it's one in 10,000 you get what i mean and so it's worth just sort of mulling over everything i'm saying here to get like an overall feel for what it is and for 20 quid if you'll be AC registered for 20 pounds a month it's just it, it just it's just like in the event something happens you have an email address to email fire off to them exactly what's happened and why and maybe a, a background story about why you think it happened or that kind of thing and they'll give you the step-by-step process in terms of what to actually reply back to amazon so don't go and be you know this, this used to be talked about a lot but don't go and jump to the reply to, to amazon saying i have no idea what this is can you please send me more because you cannot with policy violations and with stuff like that with definitely with suspensions, just keep replying. You can basically, you don't want to waste a reply to them. I know it sounds a bit petty, like what? Why can't I just keep replying to them or sending them emails? You cannot. Now, you know, over the years it changes, obviously like, but I know in the past, if you send the first email saying, uh, please explain more, you've got no idea what this means, blah, 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 blah. They come back and exp you know, pretty much don't explain because they never tell you the reason why. They just give you another kind of blanket generic email. If you keep replying to them, eventually they might stop replying to you for that issue and actually then your account is even more at risk because you can't even rectify the problem. So you've got to be careful with how many replies you're actually sending them and the first reply has to be very professional and to the point and, and addressing all of the plan of action details. And it's a lot, even though it might look quite simple in terms of plan of action, um, in some cases, they want a lot of detail as well as sometimes the plan of action can actually look a little bit daunting and you're not quite sure what you even need to include for specific parts based on what they they send you. Again, if you don't know what to do, really you want some sort of template to at least go off, right? And that's why I use this safeguard um, because in the past I've had to go to them, they've had to send me a template of how to respond and I've been able to 
have been able to get some removed uh, based off that. Um, I've had nothing serious, touch wood and all that kind of thing for the future, but I have used them and it has helped me get rid of some policy warnings. Uh, again, you can leave it 180 days, so it depends on, you know, it depends on you, but for £20, if £20 is going to make or break the business, then, you know, you're probably not doing this seriously, ultimately. It's just like something you'd maybe selling secondhand stuff on the side for a couple hundred quid a month, you know, where you wouldn't even worry about this kind of thing. But everybody else should have some sort of protection. Either if you want to wait until there's a proper problem, you might be like, well, you know what, I could pay 20, 20 quid a month, um, but, you know, if I, if I don't have problems for three, four years, I might as well just wait and pay for the the full the full price thing down here because I'll probably, you know, it'll be cheaper. So even though it's more upfront, I'm not having to pay, you know, after two years, it's cheaper to do it this way and the one-off one-time fee. So you have to really decide. Obviously, you can, you can come on here yourself and, and look. Um, just go off on this little thing so you can see the website. Basically, it's getunsuspended.com. And it used to be run... Um, by Karen Hudson. Oh well, it kind of still is, right? Because uh, you can actually come down here and see it's got like Markaroo, and that is the company behind like Bybot Pro and uh, FBM Mock Tool, I believe. Not FBM Mock Tool, uh, Bybot Pro and Property Pro, maybe. All these different uh, softwares running through my head all the time. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, Karen used to do it and be the face of it, I believe. Um, but now we actually have Anne, Anne Williams. So she is now the face of it. Because I was having a little chat with her about it, um, you know, talking about everything that this was, if it was the same as um, what Karen was doing before, and it is. So this is, and this is pretty much everything that people uh, should be getting in terms of protection. It hasn't been talked about a lot, and it used to be talked about quite often in terms of getting something like this. So anyone that's more, I wouldn't say new, but anyone that's maybe joined in the last couple of years, even, is probably not something that they've, they've seen. Maybe it hit, it is, and it's, but they've not really looked at it in detail enough because people haven't really discussed it in detail. But I would say for anyone that is looking to take it seriously as an Amazon business, and even if it's not right now, but in the future, just get that insurance, you know, just so that when this potentially happens, you're not by yourself having to work out things, um, you know, because that is the issue. It's like, do I really know what they want in terms of a reply? Just because you think you do, do do you know that's going to work, right? And with Amazon, you know how touchy they are. You've got to be really like delicate and you know careful and calculated with your responses to get things either actioned or to get things. In this example, would be to get a, a policy warning removed or your account back. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave an affiliate link below. Obviously, you're welcome to use that if you want. If you don't, you want to use it, go directly to their website. Have a little look. I would say most people probably need to sign up for that monthly thing. I've had it for like four or five years now. Uh, I've used it about four times, five times, so about one a year. Um, and it's and it's just good to have so that, you know, if something does happen, you know where directly will do. Okay, right, I'm going to go and email that email address. I'm going to detail everything. You're already in, it's not like you're in panic mode where you're like, you feel alone and you don't know where to turn. So anyway, anyway enough from me. Uh, hopefully it's just giving you a little bit of an insight into some of the things that aren't always talked about or not as often as they used to be. Uh, and it's definitely something you need to be aware of in terms of if you are running an Amazon business and looking to grow it over the long term. Love for me, I said that about five times. <laughs> so I'm going to go. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.